All right, everyone, vacation is over. It's back to normal work. Well, tomorrow, I'm going to do three videos today. I do have to cover Manafort. I would have done it yesterday, but it's like, when I looked at that and then the uproar over Cohen, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm actually going to wait because everyone else will be talking about it. It's like, let it simmer down a bit. I don't want to add to the nonsense because that's what it devolved into. We have to talk, though, about South Africa. Uh, because right now the racist ANC government there, which is little different from their competitors who are just communist, uh, communists on steroids, uh, they're planning to steal land from people based on their race. Now, that's not the headline. The headline is, oh, they begin land expropriation. Well, what that means is that they're stealing land from people. They happen to be doing it based on the fact that these people happen to be white. That, uh, that sounds a little bit troublesome now, doesn't it? The concept, it, it was funny. As the American left doesn't give a fuck about this. They're like, oh, well, thank goodness Africa for Africans or something. It's like, oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> you know, I mean, look at your very bizarre double standards, perhaps on a racial basis sometimes. Uh, they, they come out. You remember during the election when Trump said uh, something to the effect of, I think, I love eminent domain. Now, what's eminent domain? The government has determined it needs your property for some compelling reason and pays you for it. In South Africa, it's basically the government hasn't decided that it's going to be doing anything different with it. It's still just going to be farmland and it's not even going to pay you for it. Basically, you're too wealthy. What it boils down to is you're too wealthy and you're of the wrong race. The ANC wants to fuck you over in order to win votes. That's essentially what it boils down to. It's pretty sad that the two main forces within South African politics are a party that says, it's our party that says we will force you off your land at gunpoint, kick you out of the country. And another one that says we will force you off some of your land at gunpoint. We won't kick you out of the country, but fuck you anyway. That's basically what South Africa appears to be. Uh, and, and it's very strange. Well, it's not, you know, I think we can guess why. But it's strange in the reasonable sense. It's being unreasonable that the Western media refuses to really report on it. When it does, it, it minces words and it uses the same dumbass newspeak that the ANC uses. Oh, don't worry. It's just we're, we're don't worry, we're going to implement this program with justice. How can you possibly say stealing property from someone is justice? Not the people that you are taking land from, number one, didn't, you know, cause apartheid. You look at them and you see, you see, I guess, white faces, and so they're automatically some sort of political enemy. Really what it boils down to, always remember it boils down to maintaining power and along with that money, money or wealth in a more general sense, and power and wealth are sort of mesh, they're intertwined. The ANC's government, I don't think even really gives up, they know that this program's not going to do well. Like there are some people saying, hey, our currency might collapse or we might go into default. We're going to have deep, deep problems in a diplomatic and fiscal sense because of this shitty program. It's not actually going to add much to the economy, if anything. If anything, it might cause a downturn as people with a lot of land say, hey, I'll just sell it. I'm going to make some money and we're leaving South Africa, leaving people who don't know how to farm to farm extensive tracts of land that make up, what was it, like 12% of the economy of South Africa. So it's really, really dumb. The whole idea mentally, uh, it's, it's almost, you can't wrap your head around who could think that it was a good idea. But leave it to the social justice warriors to be hypocrites and say, well, this is wonderful. It's a restoration of the proud people of South Africa's right to, I don't know, sit on fallow land. Look, the, the ANC's government, there's like, well, no, 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 you've got it wrong. We're not going to steal your farm. We're only taking the fallow land from you and we're going to divide it up to some of these other people. Now, who determines which of those millions of unemployed people might want that land, number one? Who decides? How are you going to determine that? Who, who raises the best crops? Who's the most loyal to the ANC is probably more likely. <laughs> Honestly, they're likely to take people who are loyal members of their party and they'll get the, the majority of that land. They're not really, it would be almost impossible for them first and foremost, because this is a political and fiscal move, to be thinking about what's actually best for the economy. They don't fucking care. If they cared about South Africa's economy, then they would all resign because obviously if you look at South Africa's economy, it's fuckery compared to what it used to be. It's gone steadily downhill in virtually every metric now for a very long time, especially post BRICS. Wasn't that when the ANC, let me ask South Africans this, well, regardless of your race, it doesn't matter. When they struck their deals with BRICS, what were you told? How were you sold the concept of pulling together into this five nation group? 
oh, it's be wonderful. We'll have Chinese, if Chinese will pump money into this country and Russia will be a guarantor for some of the industrial goods and we'll have an export market for all of these wonderful minerals and blood diamonds and stuff like that. Isn't that how it was sold to you? Much like with Brazil, look at the BRICS nations and see what's happening to them economically. Russia, Russia's in a recession technically still. Their currency's worthless. China, uh, China wanted to be the big dog uh, of the world. Their GDP now, because it is d their growth is declining, might get eclipsed by the U.S. within the next year or so. Because Trump, you know, understands economics, if, <laughs> if maybe he's having problems with certain other political aspects. Uh, Brazil, what's Brazil's economy? Brazil has so many problems right now that it looks like they're going to elect Bolsonaro, which is funny. People who rock the boat don't get elected unless there are systemic problems with the establishment. I keep telling people. What about South Africa? Why do you think that this uh, other idiot there who runs the hardliners, or the Malema or whatever his name is, why do you think he has increasing support? The ANC is trying to stave off what might be inevitable, which is South Africa goes from being a you know, socialist economy to going back to literal Mandela communism and pissing away whatever is left of its productivity. I see terrible times ahead for South Africa. My strong advice to anybody in South Africa that might end up with their land stolen in this manner is to leave. Sell it if you can. If not, you know, to plead with some nation to take you in. Now, some people are saying the U.S., and I'm like, uh, yeah, we, we're kind of full at the moment. We've got our own problems. Look, we, we, look, I'll tell you why South African refugees won't be taken by the U.S. anytime soon. Ultimately, it boils down to the left would look at, they, they would su successfully pitch it to the American people. They'd say, look, Trump d d hates refugees unless they're white. Oh, that's, that's why he's taking them in because they're, they're what we told you he was a racist. So he's not c capable politically of shielding you. You shouldn't bother asking the U.S. for more than a small number of people to be taken in. You should be browbeating the U.K. Uh, and, and the Australians and stuff. What you really should be doing is asking for the world to intervene. In a policy, if this policy were being imposed by some ethnic majority group in Europe, on some other group of people, it would be condemned completely, it would lead to massive sanctions and probably regime change. The fact that it's happening in South Africa with a black government is the only reason why it's being tacitly accepted by these countries. The UK says, oh, oh pip pip cheerio, I think it's a wonderful idea to expropriate this land for these evil people. But then again, they're doing that in the UK and parts of London right now, so it's pretty funny. It's gotten to the point where you can be racist. Nobody has a problem with you being a racist. You just have to aim it at the right people. It's okay to be sexist as long as it's, you know, against people with Y chromosomes. It's okay to, it's okay to hate people so long as what you hate about them, some random status, is, is perceived of as being part of a majority. In the case of South Africa, it's not. It's a small minority of the population. But it's still, here we see how the social justice warriors, who by and large are communists or communist sympathizers, you see how they actually feel about westernization. This is, this is a symbol of a clump of, of perceived as westernized individuals in the continent of Africa, and they hate it. That's ultimate, and, and South Africa's government, black-led, is already westernized. That's what they don't even fucking get. They boil everything down to race because they're total bigots. Uh, meanwhile, now the government is slipping back into the Dark Ages, really, uh, trying to expropriate land from people based on their race. But it's A-OK. -okay. The Washington Post, you know, link in the description, archived, of course. Oh, land expropriation goes forward. It's funny. They talk about it from the stance of a detached party that doesn't really care. If they're talking about Trump said something mean on Twitter, they get irate about it. It's all emotion. They look at this, it's very, very dry and academic. Oh, South Africa's government might take some land from farmers. It swears it'll just be fallow plots for the most part. You know, you do realize in farming, I hope people realize this, sometimes you let a field go fallow so that it doesn't get played out and fucked up. Sometimes you have no choice but to let it go fallow. Governments will uh, tell you to leave fields fallow. Here in the U.S., because of the chemical farming of grain especially, farmers have essentially three choices. You can companion plant slash rotate. You can plant lots of legumes for years to restore the soil after fucking it over with chemical fertilizer and Roundup. Or you can let it go fallow and nature comes back and sort of, you know, renews the soil to some degree, puts the microbes back in, stores some nitrogen, there's a clover and stuff. Most farmers do the third because really companion planting with modern mechanized farming is harder. 
It's less cost effective. They already operate on a shoestring budget. Uh, and simply planting legumes, like the government doesn't want you to do that because it'll collapse the price and therefore it won't be viable. Uh, and farmers will begin going out of business. You literally, you have to intervene because of the way in which farming is done. It doesn't have to be done that way. We could switch over to a better model, but there's no willpower to do so. And the bankers are always fuck the farmers too to keep them enslaved so that they can't. Yeah, so sometimes you leave a field fallow. It could be large. Who do you think is going to get access to the land? It's not going to be people who know by and large how to farm anything. It's going to be given to ANC loyalists. They're going to give, uh, uh, you know, a million loyal people land so they can say, look, look how, you know, land ownership is up. Haha, ha, it's so wonderful. They've got their acre farms or whatever. Uh, now, it's not going to lift them out of poverty. Not going to grow the economy. Not going to solve any fundamental underlying issue. It's kicking the can down the road by the so-called moderates who are really, really far out there anyway to stave off people who are even more insane. That's really what it boils down to. So it should be condemned by the whole world. Instead, it's being actively celebrated by the big wigs in the UK as though this was some sort of wonderful thing. It's racial justice. No, it's not. That would be like saying, hey, uh, you know, your relative 150 years ago had slaves. We're taking a chunk of your land away from you, giving it to the, fa to the family who themselves haven't been enslaved. They never were slaves. They've never been segregated. We're giving them some of your land as reparations. And the government has to come in and facilitate that at gunpoint. This is why, of course, I oppose all forms of gun control. That's about all. Peace out.